Today in every accusation is a confession. Notes from the edge of the narrative matrix. Today in every accusation is a confession. The same nation which has spent 10 months calling Palestinians rapists without evidence has found itself dealing with rioters supporting the right to continue the systemic and extensively evidenced rape of Palestinian prisoners. When Israeli police detained nine IDF soldiers on accusation of sodomizing a Palestinian prisoner so brutally he couldn't walk at the notorious Sidi Timon prison in southern Israel, protests erupted from far-right activists in defense of the soldiers with the backing of multiple officials of the Netanyahu regime. The rioters were so aggressive that they actually broke into the Israeli military base where the soldiers were being questioned in an attempt to free them. Asked by the press about the rape accusations, U.S. State Department Deputy Spokesman Vedant Patel refused to say whether gang-raping Palestinian prisoners would even be considered a war crime, even if conclusively proven. The Western press are refusing to even use the word rape in reference to the allegations with the BBC describing the soldiers as standing accused of severely mistreating a Palestinian prisoner, and the New York Times describing it as suspected abuse. Israeli society has a very twisted attitude toward rape. A 2011 poll found that 61% of Israeli men don't believe forcing sex on an acquaintance counts as rape, and only 7% of Israeli men believe there's such a thing as spousal rape. They lied about mass rapes so that they could systemically rape. They lied about beheaded babies so that they could kill babies. They lied about human shields to shield themselves while killing civilians. They lied about being victims so that they could victimize others. Meanwhile, the U.S. is disputing the election results in Venezuela again because they didn't get the result they want, with more sanctions and other interventionism likely on the way for the empire-targeted nation. It's just so wild how every few years the U.S. just casually tries to install a coup regime in the oil-rich nation of Venezuela, and the Western political media class treats this as perfectly normal. And then they'll have the gall to shriek about election interference if some Russians make some Facebook memes about a presidential race or whatever. Really says a lot about how evil, entitled, supremacist, and stupid Western civilization is. People who support these regime change operations always tell me, You know nothing about Venezuela. You've never been there. Talk to Venezuelans. And I always tell them that no matter how many times I visit Venezuela or how many Venezuelans I talk to, it will still be a fact that U.S. regime change interventionism is literally always disastrous and literally always based on lies. One thing that sucks about understanding the U.S. empire is knowing with absolute certainty that there are empire managers watching a black woman run for president right now and saying, oh man, we're going to be able to use her administration to manufacture consent for so many military agendas. We're already seeing some strong shut up, shut up, shut up about Gaza energy from Kamala supporters toward those on their left. If I needed to defend my political faction by telling people to overlook an active genocide until after an election, I personally would simply leave that political faction. It was a bit rich watching progressive Democrats like AOC posture against Netanyahu's visit to Washington last week while throwing their full support behind the president who's backed Netanyahu's genocide and the vice president who's dedicated to continuing it. We also saw things like Jerry Nadler announcing that he would be attending Netanyahu's speech out of respect for the state of Israel and the office of the prime minister, while denouncing Netanyahu himself as, quote, the worst leader in Jewish history since the Maccabean king who invited the Romans into Jerusalem over 2100 years ago. One of the biggest scams being peddled by Democrats today is this frantic campaign to spin Netanyahu as meaningfully separate and distinct from everything Israel is, instead of the perfect embodiment of it, to protect Israel's image while it commits genocide and ethnic cleansing. 
They are working overtime to hang this whole mess on Bibi, so that when it's all over, and the final solution to the Palestinian question has been carried out, he can take the sins of the Zionist state and the entire U.S. centralized empire with him when he leaves office without anything ever needing to change about status quo U.S. foreign policy. They're repeating the George W. Bush playbook. Netanyahu didn't create the genocidal racism in Israel. The genocidal racism in Israel created Netanyahu. He rode already existing sentiments within Israel to power and has relied on them to stay in power ever since. You could not ask for a better representative of everything Israel is than Benjamin Netanyahu, nor indeed a better representative of everything the U.S. empire stands for.